day. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, let's turn to this First Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Read. 
thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name.
with a song of praise with an outstretched arm I will bless your name thank you Lord I just want to thank you I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You chose the cross with every breath.
cross of Jesus. We come now to a very important part of our worship service. It's the Holy Communion. It's the Holy Eucharist. It's one of the sacraments of the church that we need to partake of to remember what Jesus had done for us at the cross in Calvary. Shall we turn to the Word of God to see what the Apostle Paul had to say to us about the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross in Calvary? We found this in Colossians, the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. A book I read to you from the NIV version. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held up in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, of which Paul himself became a servant. As you all know, in this day and age, there is so much trouble and turmoil all over the world. One wonders whether there is any future for humanity. One wonders whether there is any future for, for us, or whether, whether anyone is in control of human history. The major, majority of the people in the world have resigned to the fact that there is no hope for a better future. Why not live and let live? They said, why not live the way we want to live? Why not live as if there's no tomorrow and not worry about what comes next? But I want to tell you good news. The good news is that there's hope for the future. All the things that I mentioned, the turmoil and the trouble that happened to us are the result of our inhumanity of man towards man basically result from the, it arises from the fact that we rebel against God, we sin against God, we transgress against Him. There's this dichotomy, this broken relationship with God. And when our relationship with God is broken, then our relationship with fellow men will too be broken. But thanks be to God. The Bible is clear in one thing, that there's hope for the future. God did something to end all that. He did it at the cross where Jesus died for you and I. He bore your sin and my sin and the power and guilt of sin over our lives. He took it upon himself and died to it. And thanks be to God, three days after his death, he rose again from the dead triumphantly, never to die again, sitting at the right hand of God until all his enemies are made his full stool. There at the cross, sinful men and the holy God met. And God has the victory by raising Jesus who took your sin and my sin, raising him from dead, never to die again. The crucified Christ is a revealed truth of God's judgment and God's love for the world. Then for all time and for all e eternity, the cross represents the irrefutable and certainty of the triumph of God. It means to us, humanity, there's a future for all of us. 
because Jesus is alive forevermore. Do not be mistaken. The cross is not something that happened to Jesus himself. He came to die. That was his purpose in coming. The incarnation, the coming of Christ would have no meaning without the cross. The purpose of the incarnation is a redemption of man. And thanks be to God, he did it all 2,000 plus years ago. That is the answer that we all need. And that is the answer to, to what human humanity needs. That's the answer that God has given to us. And that is the answer to our future. If Jesus is alive forevermore, then there's a hope for us. Salvation is easy and free for all of us men because it costs God so much. There at the cross is where we pass from death to life, from defeat to victory, from hatred to love. Only because of what Paul said in the passage I read to you, in particular verse 20, he said, Through him, through Jesus, to reconcile to himself all things, whether things in heaven or on earth, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Shall we not praise him for such a wonderful saviour? Shall we not thank him for such a wonderful sacrifice? Shall we not give him the worship, uh, the praise and the thanksgiving that is due to his name? Shall we not in simple faith thank God for such a glorious uh, saviour in, in his son Jesus Christ? One day he will come back again and this time he will come back gloriously, uh, incredulously, magnificently, majestically as a Lord of Lords and a King of Kings. One day we will see him for who he is and one day we will thank him and bless him to be with him eternally. Shall, not, shall we all take, have you got a, have you got a piece of biscuit or bread in your house uh, and some wine or some grape juice to take? This bread, the biscuit, represents the body, the sinless body of the Son of God shed for you and I. He gave his sinless body. The spotless lamb gave himself for you and I. Only he can sacrifice his sinless body for us. No human being can sacrifice for any other human being. Only the sinless Son of God can sacrifice his body for you and I. Shall we take this bread that represents his body broken for us and thank him for such a glorious sacrifice? The wine that represents the sinless blood of the Son of God shed for us. You know, the Bible says so clearly that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. But with the shedding of the sinless Son of God's blood, we know there's forgiveness of sin. Shall we all take this and thank God for such a glorious sacrifice in giving this life and shedding His blood for us? Shall we sing this song, uh, Wonderful Saviour? A wonderful Saviour is Jesus my Lord A wonderful Saviour to me He hided my soul in the cleft of the rock Where rivers of pleasure I see In the cleft of the rock That shadows a dry, thirsty land He hided my life In the depths of His love And covers me there with His hand And covers me there in his hand A wonderful Savior Is Jesus my Lord He taken my burden away He holded me up And I 
shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of His love and covers me there with His hand and covers me there with His hand with numberless blessings each moment He crowns and filled with His goodness divine. I sing in my rapture, O oh, glory to God, for such a Redeemer as mine. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows a dry, dusty land. He hideth my life in the depths of His love and covers me there with His hand and covers me there with His hand. The last verse. When clothed in His brightness, transported I rise to meet Him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, His wonderful love, I'll shout with the millions on high. He hardened my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, dusty land. He hardened my life in the depths of His love and covers me there with His hand. And covers me there with his hand. Father, thank you for such a wonderful Savior in the person of our Savior Jesus Christ. We bless you. We want to thank you, Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very good morning, church. Thank you for tuning in to today's video and um, hope you're sitting comfortably in your homes or wherever you are watching this video. We just want to say um, warm greetings in the wonderful name of the Lord and we will have a wonderful time of the word and the sharing by our very own Pastor Ong. Now before we move on to the word, let's just go to a few of the announcements which will be shared today. First and foremost, um, we just want to um, continue to pray, not just for ourselves, for our well-beings, but also for our country. Let us continue to pray that our country will have a dramatic change. Um, we've thanked the Lord that um, there's been some laws that have been um, given to us that will enable us to do our work daily. And we thank the Lord that, um, that we've get to do uh, the daily work as we are required. Continue to also pray for yourself. Pray for your families, your friends, and for your health as well. Let's continue to keep this momentum, this prayer momentum continuously and let us see a change come for not just in our lives but also in our country let us pray that our country will move forward and will have a dramatic change after this mco now due to the mco um, we will not have any church activities um, we will not have any gyf no praise kids church no youth and any other um, activities given to us but we will have our own individual prayers, or you can have your own um, devotion prayers with your, in the comfort of your own home, so that you can continue to let the Spirit dwell in you and dwell in your home. 
If you would like to bank in your Titan offering, you can do so by going to the information given right here. We will have our bank name, the name of the account, and also the account number. Everything will be given right here at the screen. You can pause it right now to write down the information. If you have missed that part out, you can go to the info in the description box below of the video and you can see everything will be there from top to bottom. If you have any prayer request that you would like to give, like you will want us to pray for you, you can do so by sending us your info, whatever you need to be prayed about, whether it's your health, your yourself, or wherever it is, you can send it to us and we will send it to our WhatsApp group intercessors, intercessors group, and we will continue to pray for you. We'll continue to pray until we see a dramatic change come into your life and we will continue to pray for your well-being and any more in and any more beyond that. And that's all for the announcement today. Now I'd like to end this um, announcement by giving you a Bible verse that I just picked up. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are tuning into this video, you are truly blessed and you are about to be blessed by the word given by Pastor Ong. Remember that God has given us a spirit of love and of power and of sound mind. So let not let this MCO put us down. Let us not let fear come into our lives. Let us not let the enemy control our lives. Let us put God in our lives and let him be the center of it all. Thank you very much. Without further ado, we welcome Pastor Ong. And before we even go to let him speak, we'll just have a prayer for him before he continues the word. Yes, Father, we thank you for your hand upon Pastor Ong. We thank you, Lord, that um, even though, Lord Father, we are still continuing this um, recorded sermon, but we thank you, Lord God, that we are still getting the word out. We're still getting your kingdom out. And we're making sure, Lord Father, that your word is being spread through these online messages. We thank you, Lord Father, that you're using Pastor Ong to deliver the message and we thank you Lord Father that you are using him as a mouthpiece let your wisdom and your power flow into him and let it be spread through this mic and through the many people who are watching this right now Lord Father in the name of Jesus we commit this day into your hands we commit Lord Father that today is a good day we will rejoice and we'll be glad in it thank you in Jesus name I pray Amen Amen, Amen. Praise the Lord it's wonderful to be able to speak to you again and to wish you the Lord's best and to pray that uh, God's presence and favour will be upon you. Uh, we are, I'd like to thank Aaron for making the announcements and also uh, Daniel for leading us into a wonder, wonderful time of worship and Dr. William Tan, who has led us into a meaningful uh, manner in which we could remember the Lord and of all that He has done for us. Now I'd like to come to the message and today I'd like to speak to you about alone and abiding. Again, the message is alone and abiding. Now, being alone is an experience that most of us would not choose to be in. But the present situation leaves us no choice at all and gives us a sense of being cut off and left to ourselves. God has made us physical, social, emotional, intellectual and spiritual beings we need people we need others and most of all we need the lord to be cut off from people even to some extent can be bad for us i found so many who have spoken about this that it, it is a trying time to be locked down and to be cut off from people people who are important to us people whom we love you know the other day as i was walking around in our vicinity i met one of our neighbors 
by the name of Juliana Lee. And as we were talking, she shared with me that her son, who is working in CIMB Bank in Kuala Lumpur, told her that he was going crazy, having to work at home, cut off from his colleagues. He found it to be really tough. You know, earlier on, our roads were so deserted that many of us sensed that we were living in a lonely and forsaken environment. You know, there were times earlier on during the lockdown when I would just walk to the front of my house and look down the road, up and down the road. There was not a single car, not a single human being. And I was wondering, how can things change to such an extent? And the other day, driving to the city of Ipoh at night, my auntie Susie remarked to me as she was sitting beside me that the city was so quiet and has lost its liveliness. It's like, uh, it's not quite what Ipoh is really like. Being left alone can lead us to despair and even depression for some. But my brothers and sisters, it can also lead us to build a strong relationship with the Lord by seeking Him and drawing close to Him. The Lord Himself can fill us with His presence and take away the sense of emptiness and of being alone. When we focus on the Lord, we will know and understand that we are never alone, for He is always nearby. In fact, He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. It can be a time, alone can be a time of waiting upon Him and building up our prayer life. We read in Isaiah 40, 40 verse 31, But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know this verse refers to running before walking. You tend to think that walking should come before running. But here it says, you shall run and not be weary, and you shall walk and not faint. Running is mentioned first. The reason being that when we come to know the Lord, we walk with the Lord. We learn to walk with the Lord. In our walk with the Lord, sometimes we get left behind, further and further back, until we have to run to catch up, to be with the Lord. And that's so with many of us Christians in our personal experience. Brothers and sisters, be drawn to the Lord and give time to Him, and he will, you will enjoy His presence more and more. Inexplicably, peace will come upon you without you doing anything at all as you do your part in seeking the Lord. You will begin to realize that you are not in such a bad situation after all. You know, God is faithful and true. We are never, really, we are never left alone when we are alone with God. I remember clearly that uh, I told Molly, my wife, that I cannot do without her when she said that she felt that the Lord was calling her home. Now that is almost two years, just more, more, one more month before it's two years since she left me, I still miss her very much. But I realize that with the reality of God with me, I can go on. It's not like I cannot go on because God is there with me. We read also, and the Lord, He is the one 
who goes before you, he will be with you. He will not leave you, nor forsake you. Do not fear, nor be dismayed. Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 8. Now I like to talk about, I talk about being alone. I like to talk about abiding in the wine. It's so important to realize that though we may be alone, as long as we are abiding in the wine, we will not be in a bad state and deteriorate to a bad shape. Now, abiding in the wine, Jesus himself said, I am the true wine and my father is the wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the wine, neither can you unless you abide in me. John chapter 15 verses 1 to 4. Ponder over this, my brothers and sisters, and you will realize that abiding in Him is so, so important. Number one, our abiding in Christ directly affects our work and our responsibility. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, and without me you can do nothing. John 15 verse 5 Whether we are productive and effective or not depends on us abiding in Him. You know, there are times I struggle when I have not been able to reach anyone for Christ. I have not even the opportunity to speak to someone about Christ. I would wonder to myself, why is it that I'm in that state? And when I realize that uh, I need to uh, refresh myself in the presence of God to get to sense that I'm in touch with Him, I'm abiding in Him. And as I do that, I realize that, you know, the situation turns around and it's not like how I have experienced, like uh, not being effective for the kingdom. Our abiding in Christ, secondly, directly affects our com communication with God. If sometimes there are Christians who say they just can't hear God, they don't know how to speak to God, and they found that they are, they found that they are cut off from God. It's like there is no communication between them and God. It's so important that we realize the importance of abiding in Him. Thirdly, abiding in Christ directly affects our walk with God. As we abide in Him, He will spontaneously guide us to be His disciples indeed. And our walk with Him will be close and it will get closer every day. It was an abiding relationship that Jesus Jesus had with his father, which energized and clearly defined his ministry. He was so effective. Every moment of his life was fruitful, productive, and meaningful. If this was indeed true for him, then our abiding relationship with Jesus is needed for us to live effective fruitful lives on the earth. The prayer of Jesus for us is that we may be one in Him and in His Father. John 17 verse 21 and that takes abiding. Just as a branch needs to be vitally connected to the wine, so we need to be vitally connected to the Lord Himself. We need his vital, we need this vital connection. And then we can say with the Apostle Paul, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. You know, Christianity is surely more than holding right beliefs, though right beliefs are really important. But Christianity is surely more than holding right beliefs or adopting right behaviour. And right behaviour is also very important to conduct ourselves uh, honourably and correctly in this present world. But it is more, surely more than this. For it has to do with right standing with God. Our right standing with God counts for so much. For our very righteousness is from God by faith in Him. Philippians 3 verse 9. The righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. Romans chapter 3 verse 22. Our faith is about union and communion with Jesus. You know, this, during this period of lockdown, there are times when I find that I have so much time at hand. There are times I wonder, what, how am I going to spend the time? And very often, when we spend some time with God, and uh, we think that uh, we have nothing more, more to do, uh, to be with Him. And hence, we turn our attention to everything else, and be caught up in everything else, when actually, we can use that time in an effective way to spend with Him. You know, the other day, I listened to a message where um, this servant of the Lord said that for the last seven years, he has never seen a television program. He has not seen any television program at all. And he spent his time reading the Word, spending the time waiting upon the Lord, spending the time praying and seeking Him, and he found that his life was so taken up with the Lord. It was meaningful. It was what the Word did promise to us, how our life could be. Of course, I don't think anyone can plunge into a time of spending five hours with the Lord a day or more than that. It's not easy to do that, but if we can build it up, but there is a need for a, an intentional action towards that. And you'll find that you can build up a wonderful relationship with God so that you know Him better, you come draw closer to Him, and you experience His presence in your life. And uh, it will help you to a great extent of knowing how you can be such a victorious and overcoming Christian. Our hearts should desire this intimate relationship with the Lord. David gives us such an eminent example. When he reflected this well, when he prayed, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I will look for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Psalm 63 verses 1 and 2. God invites us to abide in Him. I, abiding in Him is not a feeling or a belief, but something we do. Now I find that uh, during this time of lockdown, when my, I'm cut off from people I care for, people I love, I feel that I've been deprived, denied of what is rightly, uh, I'm right, what I'm rightly entitled to. But when I begin to turn to the Lord, I see that it's not such a bad situation after all. There have been nights when I cannot sleep. Even like last night, I woke up at 2 a.m. in the morning. Of course, I went to bed a bit early, went to bed at 9 p.m., woke up at 2 p.m., and I was tossing in the bed, not knowing how to get back to sleep. And then I realized 
how I've been able to get to sleep again each time. And so I did. I decided to commune with the Lord in the simplest way possible, calling upon Jesus. I said, Jesus, Jesus. And I trained my thoughts to be focused on Him as I call upon Him. I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I keep on saying Jesus until I uh, was not vocal anymore and I was just thinking in my heart, I'm calling upon you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And, not, and before long, I was asleep again. When I went back to sleep, I'm not sure, but it really worked for me because I went back to sleep. Abiding in Christ requires dependence upon the Holy Spirit, whereby the falling, falling things are true. Yes, uh, last week, Sister Petra was talking about the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so important to us. Without Him, we will never be able to abide in the white. Without Him, we will never be able to sense God in our lives the way we can. It's so important that we realize that the Holy Spirit is given uh, to us today that He may work this in our lives, help us to abide in the wine, and help us to experience the uh, tremendous presence of God in our lives. Now these following things are true. When we experience the Holy Spirit leading us to abide in the wine, they'll be walking by faith and not by sight. You know, very often we say, that we cannot see God and so it is not easy to have faith in Him but it's the other way around even as we are led by faith to exercise what is spiritual to walk by faith in others trusting God even though we don't see Him and believing His promises even though we are not able to uh, tangibly uh, figure it out and as we do so, you find that God will be at work in you. We do not walk by faith, we, we walk by faith and do not walk by sight. It's not seeing, believing. It's experiencing God and then we begin to see. And we'll begin, we begin to experience God in a wonderful way. For we walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. And when we do so, God will be with us in it. As you reflect back, there are times when you struggle, there are times when you are not sure, but as you continue to decide that you want, you want to believe God for what He has said, and you are going to on your part, do your part in walking by faith, and God will help you in your struggle. And you, you will eventually realize that God is with you through it all. Secondly, spending focused time with Him. It is putting everything in perspective. Those things that are not important, put aside. The things that are important, give them the priority and give God the first place in your life. Draw close to God and He will draw close to you. It's what we read in James chapter 4, verse 8. You know, sometimes we say, God is so far from us. But if you decide to draw close to God, even then, even though you don't experience God, you don't sense His presence with you, you continue to draw close to God. And it will not take long before you realize that there is God being there with you, drawing close to you even as He has promised. How wonderful it is to be able to sense God there with you, drawing close to you. And next, thirdly, there is a submitting to Him and His Word. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Our prayers become more effective. We will be able to pray in the will of God and we will be able to sense God working with us, answering our prayers in ways that will lift us up. And fourthly, strengthening yourself in Him. 
You know, we can be in discouraging positions and that was what was true of David when he went back to Ziklag. He found his wife, his, uh, his wives, uh, his uh, children and uh, the families of his uh, soldiers were all taken away by the enemy because the enemy ransacked Ziklag, took everything and left nothing behind. And uh, he was of course distressed and his, his army, his soldiers were also distressed. So much so, they wanted to stone him. They thought to themselves, what sort of leader we have that has caused this situation without leaving uh, some soldiers behind to look after the family. And they were in that dire position. David, instead of getting discouraged, he went apart and he decided to strengthen himself in the Lord. And because he was strengthened in the Lord, he was led to do the right thing and bring about the reversal of the situation where they were able to overtake the enemy and uh, uh, give them a thorough defeat and bring back their entire family and the things that were taken. And they were able to see how God was with them. Although we may be put in bad situations in our lives, but when we learn to uh, strengthen ourselves in the Lord, learn to trust Him just the same, you find that God will turn things around for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 tells us that His strength is made perfect in our weakness. In our weakness, as we go to Him, His strength will replace our weakness. Then I'd like to read this uh, beautiful verse in Psalm to you, Psalm 27, verse 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Yes, we need to do that more. And finally, standing firmly in our hope. For each one of us, there's a hope of eternal salvation, hope of better things to come beyond this life, hope that is found in Him. There's a need for us to stand firmly in our hope in Him without wavering and simply trusting Him. Psalm 71 verse 5. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Romans chapter 5 verse 5. My brothers and sisters, it's so important for us to abide in the wine. You know, I, I've been doing gardening at the back during this uh, time of lockdown and I, I realised how important it is that uh, the branches are attached in a manner that the sap line of the plant can go through to the various branches so that these branches can be alive. Once the branches are cut, cut off, it will be a different situation uh, at, uh, 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 a different situation and uh, there will be no life in the branches that are not attached. I have uh, cut branches and put them in the ground and uh, believe that life will spring forth and as I look at the, the, some of the branches of these mulberry trees and uh, these uh, ubi kayu that I planted in the ground I was excited when I saw shoots sprouting out from all sides. I planted 12 ubikayu plants, you know, short sticks. I, I uh, planted them in the ground and I was surprised to see every one of them had shoots sprouting out. And I was really excited that there is life in this. You know, when the life of God goes through us, there, there is life in us. There will be the sprouting, there will be life, and eventually there will be fruit that will indeed bless us and others as well. It's so important to abide in the wine. I'd like to just sing a 
simple song to you as I end. I found a new way of living. I found a new life divine. I got the fruit of the Spirit. I'm abiding, abiding in the wine. Abiding in the wine, abiding in the wine. Love, joy, health, peace, He has made them mine. I've got prosperity, power and victory. Abiding, abiding in the wine. This is a song that talks about abiding in the wine. It's so important for each one of us. When we are attached to the Lord, we know, we, are, we believe in what the Word says about uh, the importance of being attached to Him, you will find the life of Christ making all the difference in your life. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord help you that you realize that you are not in such a bad situation after all. There are times that when I think I'm in a bad situation, when actually, when I experience the life of the Lord, I, I'm able to say, it is not so bad after all. In fact, it is really good after all. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you as we end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the wonderful God that you are. Lord, that you do not leave us to our situations, whether good or bad. You do not leave us to our struggles. You will, you will be there for us when we call upon you. You are, in fact, just a breath away, always willing to respond to us. Father, help us to realize that you are a good and wonderful God and that uh, when we are attached to you, there is life coursing through us, life giving us, making the difference in our lives. Father, Lord, we want to pray that we will learn to abide in the wine, abide in the Lord always. Allow, allow His set line to uh, go through us each time. Lord, that we will be very much alive spiritually. Father, Lord, we thank you for all that you are to us and all that you have done for us. And we are to pray, I want to pray for my brothers and sisters out there. They will be touched by you. Whatever the situation, they will find that you are the answer. Not only do you provide the answer, you will turn things around and turn it into a situation whereby they will experience victory. They will experience prosperity. They will experience fruitfulness. They will experience your goodness, your rich grace upon them. You, they will experience uh, meaningfulness, their lives being protect, productive and uh, effective for the kingdom of God. And they themselves will know the joy of the Lord in their lives. Let this be so in the lives of my brothers and sisters and on those who are hearing what I'm saying just now. Thank you, even as we commit each one, asking your rich favour and your rich uh, protection and your protection upon each one. This I pray in Jesus' blessed name. Amen.